Hello and welcome to The Vine, the worship service for the online campus of the Wrightsville United Methodist Church in Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina. I'm Pastor David Haley, one of the associate pastors, and I'm just so glad to welcome you to this worship service today. Now you may be watching from home, you may be traveling somewhere, maybe even on vacation, um, you could even be in a hospital or a nursing home watching this video. Wherever you're watching from, our prayer is that this service will be a blessing for you, that God will speak to you and encourage you in your faith during this time of worship together today. So, once again, welcome, and let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship. As we continue to worship, I invite you to join with me as we pray together the congregational opening prayer. The words will be uh, printed on the screen so that you can see them and follow along. Let us pray. Creator God, you hear our wordless hopes. You hold our greatest fears and know our deepest shame. Nothing we say do or think surprises you because you made us and know us more intimately than we know ourselves. As we seek to understand ourselves, give us courage, knowing that your love for us will never be called into question. In Jesus' name, amen.
Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Julia Hayes. I'm one of the associate pastors here, and it is my great joy and privilege to get to lead us in prayer today. Please join me now as we go before God together. Holy and loving God, thank you for gathering us together today in your name. God, we thank you that you are so much bigger than time or space, and so you are able to unite us together in your spirit, even when we aren't together physically. Lord, we are so grateful today for the promise that your love for us is unstoppable and unfailing. We thank you for the assurance that you've given us through Jesus Christ that there is nothing that we could do, nothing anyone could do, that could keep us from your love. And yet, God, we confess that this is hard for us to believe. We spend so much of our lives trying to prove our worth to ourselves, to others, and sometimes even to you. It makes us competitive and anxious and keeps us from living in the life-giving ways that you've called us to. God, forgive us. Free us from this so that we can love you with our whole hearts and live the life that you've called us to. Lord, today we bring to you all of the needs of our community. God, we pray for this community of Wrightsville Beach and Wilmington. We pray also for the communities of wherever it is that we are watching this worship service from. And God, we pray for our whole country that you would guide our leaders and help them to make wise and just choices. We pray for our world that there would be peace. We pray especially today for peace in Israel and Gaza and for peace in Ukraine. And Lord, we pray also for all those whose needs are especially close to our hearts today. And we name them before you now, either out loud or in our hearts. God, we thank you that you not only hear our prayers, but you listen to them. And Lord, we thank you that your love is never limited by our ability to believe it. Lord, help us now to mean what we say as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We have the opportunity now to get to worship God by giving back to God a portion of what has been given to and entrusted to us. If you'd like to worship God today through a gift to the ministries of Wrightsville United Methodist Church, there's a few ways that you can do that. You can always mail in a donation through the post office. You can also give on our website, wrightsvilleumc.org, or using our cell phone app. Let us now continue in an attitude of prayer as we give to God. kids. I'm Pastor Julia. When I was in school, in elementary school, like a lot of you probably are, I had a teacher who used to give us shiny gold star stickers when we did something really good. Do you know what I'm talking about? We would get them for days that we brought all of our books or did something kind to someone else. You'd get a gold star as a reward. Or maybe you haven't had a gold star, but you've had a different kind of prize. I remember my dance studio used to give out these pretty blue ribbons if you had perfect attendance. And 
Later on, I was a cheerleader and there was a trophy that you got if you won the competition. Well, I'm gonna be honest, I've always really liked winning prizes like that. If it was a gold star or a fancy pretty ribbon or a trophy, that makes me feel so special. Have you ever won something like that? It feels great. And if you have, then I hope that you enjoy it. And I hope that if you have a goal to win something like that, that you'll put your heart into it. But have you ever been disappointed because you didn't win the prize? Maybe someone else did and you didn't win that time. Or maybe you didn't make it to class every day and so you couldn't get the perfect attendance award. I always feel really lousy when that happens. You know, today we're learning that God is different from the way that we usually think. You know, in so much of life, there's awards and special things like that. But God doesn't give out gold stars or blue ribbons or trophies. In fact, there isn't anything that you can do that'll make God love you more or any way that you could mess up that would make God love you less. That's what we're talking about today. The fact that you, just as you are today, are someone that God loves. That is the best prize that there is. So the next time that you maybe are disappointed that you didn't win a prize, or maybe you feel extra proud because you did, I want you to remember that no matter whether you win or you lose, God loves you so, so, so much, more than you can possibly ever imagine times infinity. Let's say a prayer together. Dear God, thank you for making me. Thank you for loving me no matter what. I love you too. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. I'm Doug Lane, senior pastor here at Wrightsville United Methodist Church, and I just want to thank you for taking time to worship with us on the vine this morning. We're beginning a new sermon series entitled, Who Am I? And we're going to start with the starting point in the Christian life, baptism. So we're going to look at our scripture today, Mark 1, verses 1 through 11, and learn about Jesus' baptism. Mark starts, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who's more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I've baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are, my you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we thank you for the beginning of a new year and the beginning of a new day. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. Lord, help us to see your glory this day. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, most clubs, fraternities, sororities, certainly religious groups, have some type of rite of initiation into their group. Some of these are very formal, some are much less so. I can think of the Cub Scout that has their crossing over ceremony 
or the debutante who makes her formal debut before society, or the pilot that takes their first solo flight. All of these are different types of initiation rites. For the Christian church, that rite of initiation is called baptism. For many, if not all Christians, baptism is the defining event that marks the beginning of a person's discipleship and active church life. It is not the highlight of a person's faith. It is the starting point. And that's why we're starting with a sermon on baptism for the first Sunday of the new year and the first chapter in our series entitled, Who Am I? In Romans 6, the Apostle Paul calls us to remember our baptism. Well, for us United Methodists, it's really hard to understand what he's talking about. I can't remember my baptism. I was only four months old. So what's that mean to remember my baptism? In fact, what's the meaning of baptism anyway? What actually happens in baptism? Well, when I was a young, brash associate pastor in the mountains, I was much less mature than the associates we have here at Wrightsville. One year, the senior pastor was going out of town the Sunday after Christmas and asked me to baptize the grandchild of a church member. Now, the child lived in Florida year-round, but would be in town for Christmas week. Asked why we were doing the baptism instead of the church where the parents belonged. I was told the parents don't go to church. And when I pressed further, I learned that they didn't have any intention of finding a church and had no plans to raise their child in a church. So I then asked the senior pastor why we were doing the baptism at all, since baptism is the rite of initiation into the church, not just a universal way of celebrating a baby's birth. He said, well, I just happen to believe that something magical happens at baptism. And that was a really sweet thought. But I responded by saying, and I can't believe I'm telling you all this, well then, why don't you go out on Highway 64 with a garden hose and just baptize everybody who drives by? My point was not wrong, but the attitude and the tone in which I said it certainly was. I ended up baptizing the child. What happens in baptism? First, we get our identity as Christians. Through baptism, Jesus received his identity. The voice of God was heard from beyond the clouds. You are my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Just like Jesus received his identity as the beloved son of God, we receive our identity as persons and as Christians. And furthermore, we are told that we are loved. That's the, where the relationship starts, with God saying, I love you. You are my beloved. How cool is that? How great would it be if we woke up every morning and remembered that God is saying to us, you are my child, my beloved with whom I am well pleased. For Christmas, one of our church members, Evans Lackey, gave me a devotional book written by Jim Branch. And in the book, Jim wrote, A few months ago, I was meditating and came to a realization that I tend to go through life trying, in futility, I might add, but trying to create a self each day rather than to simply receive a self each day. And any self that is created by anything or anyone other than the Creator, the God who breathed me into being, can only be false. Any self that I create or manufacture is a false self because it's just a cheap imitation, adaptation, or distortion of the me I was created to be by the one who dreamt me into being before the foundations of the earth. My true identity can only be bestowed, he said. It can never be achieved. So my challenge each and every day is to stop the ongoing pattern of trying in desperation to create a self that has in fact already been fearfully and wonderfully made and to simply receive my true self in peace and in freedom from the God who made me uniquely and loves me dearly. It's funny how much I strive to make a name for myself when only God can give me the name I was made to bear my true name. He continues, how incredibly freeing. It's as if God is saying, I have given you your value and your worth. I have bestowed it upon you and it can never be lost. So stop measuring, stop earning, stop comparing, stop performing. Your worth is not hanging in the balance. It does not depend on anything you achieve or on any accomplishment you attain. So relax. 
Live in the freedom of knowing you are loved deeply and fully and completely, as well as eternally. Instead of working so hard to prove yourself, just fall in love with me. Well, I got to tell you, when I read that, I felt free as well. You know, at one point or another, all of us ask the existential questions. Who am I? Where do I belong? What is my purpose? Somehow, as Jesus' baptism defined his life, our baptism defines our lives, just as, the mu as much as the name we've been given. To those of us who are baptized as infants, our parents stepped forth in faith in our place and made a promise to raise us in the Christian tradition and beliefs. They are part of who we are and who we are still becoming. These values define and shape our lives. And then the church itself made a promise to surround us with a community of love and forgiveness. Isn't that what we need more than anything? Love and forgiveness? I came across an article by a new father who noted the importance of naming and being called names. He writes, I recently ran through the list of nicknames my wife and I have given, excuse me, have called our baby Bridget since she was born. I was amazed. In only 22 weeks, we have referred to her as Bridget, Bridge, Bridgy, Bridgelet, Bridgester, Bridgemeister, Bridgman, Bridget the Fidgety Midget, Bridgets of Madison County, Poo, Poop, Poopy, Pumpkin, Pumpkin Seed, Pumpkin Pooch, Peanut, Muffin, Noodle, Doodle, Doodle Doo, Dew Drop, Sweet Pea, Pea Pod, Boopy, Bubbles, Bundles, and Stinky the Bald-Headed Girl. What we are called makes a difference. As we grow, if we are called smart, it makes a difference. If we are called stupid, it makes a difference. If we're called pretty, it makes a difference. If we are called ugly, it makes a difference. What we are called matters. And being called beloved matters. Being called forgiven matters. Being called Christian matters. Did you know that the word Christian means little Christ? If we are committed Christians, we are to follow in the footsteps of Christ. We are supposed to be little Christ, representing Christ in all we do and all we say. Pretty radical concept. So when you're wrestling with the problems of this world, remember your baptism. Remember who you are in Christ. So baptism defines us. It gives us identities as little Christ. What else does baptism mean? Well, again, let's go back to Romans 6, where Paul defines baptism in this way. Do you not know that all of us who've been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we've been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. So remember your baptism when you face a loss or a crisis. Jesus never said it was going to be a bed of roses. On the contrary, Jesus said, unless a grain falls into the earth and dies, it cannot bear fruit. Unless you die to the world and to sin, you cannot live. So remember your baptism. You died with Christ. You died unto the world, to your own selfish desires, to everything that this world has to offer in terms of false joy. The world tells us you need this. You can't do without that. This temporary pleasure will bring you bliss and joy and fulfillment. But later you find out that this and that isn't all it was cracked up to be. And yet you want more and more of it without ever finding fulfillment. The message of the media is you need to have all these things to truly live. You've got to be a consumer. You need to own that nice house, that nice car, that nice boat. And before you know it, you become addicted to materialism and you start envying your neighbor and bickering over an inheritance with your own family members. As those who've been baptized, we need to remember we have died with Christ. We have died to the world, to the lusts and the pleasures it may give us for a while. What does it mean to die to the pleasures of this life? Well, Jesus has a few suggestions on the matter. 
Among other things, he said, if someone asks you to walk a mile, then you want to inherit the kingdom of God? Go walk two miles. Jesus told the rich young ruler, give away all your possessions, all that you own, and give it to the poor. Deny yourself. Take up your cross. Do not build up treasures on earth, but instead build up treasures in heaven. But it doesn't stop at dying to the world and to our own selfish ambitions. It doesn't end there. There's more, much more. After the dying comes the rising with Christ, like the phoenix from the ashes. Jesus once said, if you give up all these things for my sake, you'll not only inherit the kingdom of God, but even in this lifetime you'll be blessed. For your bodily needs, there might be MasterCard, but God's blessings are truly priceless. And the greatest blessings of all are the joy of God in the midst of sadness, the peace of God, in the midst of a storm, the love of God in the face of put-downs, criticism, and hatred. You can't put a price tag on these things. See what's happening here? Christ turns everything upside down. He takes the message of the world and reverses it. The world tells you, live as hard as you can, get everything out of it, because life is short and you're going to die. But Jesus says... If you're willing to die first to the things of this world, well, then you'll have real life. You'll have it abundantly and you'll have it eternally. So when you feel the pain because you lost possessions or a job or anything valuable to you, remember your baptism. Remember you gave it up already at the moment of your baptism. You're called to be a faithful steward of what God gave you in the first place. When you experience broken dreams or broken relationships, remember your baptism. God is in control. Surrender your future into God's hands once again. Let us this morning remember our baptisms. Let us renew our baptismal vows. Let us recommit ourselves once again to die to the world and to rise with Christ. And instead of living for the world, which promises pleasures and leaves us with a terrible headache in the morning, let us commit to the God who created us, who calls us beloved, and morning by morning gives us new mercies to see. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Holy God, our Creator, Lord, you have called us, called us by name, and told us that we are your beloved. Lord, help us to take pride in that, to rise above the name calling that we hear from this world and recognize that we are your child, and that in your eyes, you are well pleased. Lord, help us to stand up straight, to look toward the heavens, not toward the ground, and to recognize that we are truly loved. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning I'd like to invite you to remember your baptism. Now, some of you may not have been baptized, and I hope that this will be a moment that might stir something in your heart, and, um, and perhaps you will look forward to the day in which uh, you will be baptized. And if you are locally, I'd love for you to reach out to me, or if uh, wherever you may be, I'd love for you to uh, reach out to a local pastor and talk to them about baptism and what that means in being a part of a local church. Um, and of course, I know many of you are probably um, listening to this video in places where you're not just simply sitting down. Um, you may be in the car or, or out on a run or, or whatever. Um, but uh, even if you cannot physically participate in this part, I hope that you will continue to listen to the words of this important ritual. Um, but if you are stationary, I'd love for you to get a bowl. It doesn't have to be as big as this one. It can be something much smaller. And, um, and some, some container of water. I've got a pitcher, but you could just use a little cup or, or what have you. Um, any, anything it could be much, much simpler than what I have. Um, but if, you're, if they are available to you, I'd love for you to get a bowl and some water. And then listen to these words. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, 
we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift to us, offered to us without price. And through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. And so I ask you, on behalf of the whole church universal, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, your answer is, I do. Great. Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you? Wonderful. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord, in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? Do you? And according to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representative in the world? Will you? And now would be the time to pour the water into the bowl. The Lord be with you. And you say, and also with you. Thank you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. So pour out your Holy Spirit and by this gift of water, wherever we may be, call to our remembrance the grace declared to us in our baptisms. For you have washed away our sin and clothed us with righteousness throughout our lives, that dying and, raised, and being raised with Christ, we may share in his final victory. And so wherever you are, I invite you to remember your baptism and be thankful. I'm going to do so by touching the water and making the sign of the cross on my forehead. And I invite you to do the same wherever you may be. Remember your baptism and be thankful. And now may the Holy Spirit work within you. That having been born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. I hope you have an extraordinary new year, an extraordinary life with Jesus, that you remember that you are baptized wherever you go and whatever is happening, whether you are having a really crummy day or whether you're having a great day, remember that you are a beloved child of God and that he is well pleased with you. Know that no matter what happens in your life, you cannot sin away the love that he has for you. Now, God gets disappointed, just like parents get disappointed in us when we do something wrong. But he's not going to ever stop loving you. And if you'll go to him, he will forgive you. And so remember your baptism. And remember that you're part of a church, a part of a community who's also on this journey with you. And together, we can love and forgive one another and work toward the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. So I hope you have a great day today, a great week, and a great new year. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.